If you're considering installing solar panels for your home, then stop right there. I want you to watch this video first because I'm gonna be teaching you everything that needs to happen from when you sign up until the solar panels are installed and producing power for your home. This video is sponsored by Climate First Bank, a provider of financing options for solar projects. Visit our website to explore our loan programs. All right, now in today's video, we're talking about the solar installation process and a step-by-step -step breakdown of what needs to happen from when you first decide to go solar through designing and installing the system, and then finally getting that system up and running and producing power for your home. Now, the first step is your initial consultation. Now, the purpose of your initial consultation is to determine what your goals and requirements are for the solar power system. Uh, is your goal to save as much money as possible, to, to get the best dollar for dollar payback from your solar investment? Uh, or is your goal to be more self-sufficient and energy independent uh, and to have secure backup power during an emergency? Uh, of course, if that's the case, you're probably gonna be installing battery storage with your solar power system. But all of this should come out during the initial consultation. Uh, also, during the initial consultation, you should have an energy usage analysis. Uh, your solar system designer or your solar consultant should review your electric bill with you and look at what your historical energy usage has been. And then finally, the initial consultation could include a roof inspection and or an electrical panel inspection. You know, just a brief initial inspection to determine which roof space would be viable for solar panel mounting, uh, taking an observation of which roof surfaces may be affected by shading compared to which surfaces would be great candidate for solar panel mounting. And then sometimes we'll wanna take a look at the electrical panel as well to get an idea of how much room we have to work with inside the electrical panel. All right, step two is your system design. Now, part of the system design process should include a shading analysis. And if your contractor is using a good solar design software, they should be able to show you which parts of the roof receive the highest irradiance or meaning that the most sunlight hits that part of the roof. Of course, the design will also include your equipment selection. Uh, and a good system design should give you the specific quantity, make, and model of all the major system components. So that's gonna be your solar panels, uh, your inverter, or your microinverters if you're using microinverters, uh, and your battery storage if you're gonna be installing storage with your solar power system. So all that should be broken down on the system design, as well as a roof layout and sometimes a production forecast as well. Uh, in other words, they should show you exactly where they're proposing to place the solar panels and why, and how much energy you can expect to receive over the course of the year with that solar power system. Now, step three is doing your contract and your solar financing. And of course, the first thing you should look at your contract is what is your total system cost? Now, believe it or not, folks, some solar out there is being sold without the company even disclosing what the total contract price is or what the total purchase price is. Sometimes the sales and marketing representative will just say, hey, we're gonna reduce your electric bill by approximately $100 a month without disclosing what the total cost of the project is or what the total amount being financed is. Uh, and of course, you wanna know what is your cost of financing, both in terms of what is the rate of interest you're paying and what is your total interest payments over the term of the agreement, if you keep the agreement to full term, as well as what are the fees that you're paying. Now, these could be normal bank transaction fees, or in the case of solar, you have to be especially careful to watch out for dealer fees. So, so what are dealer fees? Dealer fees are fees charged by financing institutions to your solar installer, and the solar installer passes those fees on to customers in the form of higher pricing. Now, these dealer fees are not always disclosed. In fact, oftentimes, if you look at a solar proposal, the homeowner thinks that they're just paying for materials and labor, not realizing that the cost of the materials and labor has been inflated to account for the dealer fees that the finance company charges the contractor and the contractor ultimately has to recoup that from the homeowner or from the system owner. Now, these dealer fees in solar can be huge. I've seen it where they could increase your contract price by 20%, 30%, even 40%. Uh, and again, oftentimes these dealer fees are not disclosed. They're just presented as a basic materials and labor proposal. Now, there are some companies out there that offer good solar financing with competitive interest rates and no dealer fees. And that's actually a great time to introduce today's video sponsor, 
Climate First Bank. Today's video is brought to you by Climate First Bank. If you're looking for a solar financing partner that offers competitive rates, no dealer fees, and a simple online application process, then you need to take a look at Climate First Bank. Climate First Bank is committed to ethical solar financing with full transparency and a secure online application process. Reach out directly on the Climate First Bank website and you'll be matched with an approved installer in your area. So if you're ready to start your renewable energy journey with a financing partner you can trust, then go directly to climatefirstbank.com slash surge so you can get matched with an approved installer in your area right away. Thank you Climate First Bank for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. Now of course the other thing you want to check with your agreement is what are the guarantees. Now in solar you should have product warranties or equipment warranties. The solar panels themselves should have a 25 year warranty and your other major system components like inverters and batteries should have warranties as well. I would say minimum five years, uh, but some of the top tier inverters and batteries will offer you a 10, 15, or even 25 year warranty on those components as well. Now, of course, you're gonna wanna have a workmanship warranty from your contractor. Now, the workmanship warranty is gonna cover the quality of all the electrical wiring, and especially the waterproofing around any roof attachment points. Now, a good workmanship warranty, I would say, is five years or more. Uh, and then, of course, you wanna check your power production guarantees. Uh, again, oftentimes, when you have your solar system designed, it's designed to produce a specific amount of energy over the course of the year, so if that power production is being guaranteed, that should all be specified there in the contract. All right, step number four is your engineering, permitting, and interconnection application. Now, once your solar design has been completed, and a member of the engineering team will break down your system design into fully detailed engineered plan. Uh, oftentimes, it's, it's down to the level of detail of where each roof attachment, each screw, is going to be installed to mount those solar panels to your home, as well as a detailed electrical wiring schematic showing all the system components and how they're electrically connected to one another. Now, that package will get submitted to your local jurisdiction, your, you know, your local city or county government to issue building and electrical permits, uh, as well as that package will be sent to your power company with what's called the interconnection application. Uh, the interconnection application is, is your application to engage in a two-way relationship with the power company. Not only will they be supplying you power during evening hours, but once your solar panels are installed, you'll be powering the house, and in many cases, you'll be sending your excess solar power back to the utility during daylight hours. So that, that interconnection application is what establishes that relationship. Essentially, you and the power company become partners where you can buy and sell and trade electricity back and forth. And then if you live in a neighborhood that has a homeowners association or a property owners association, you may have to submit an application to that body as well. Uh, typically, they don't need to see the same level of detail that the authority having jurisdiction, the AHJ, or the power company needs, but they may want to see something like this showing where solar panels are going to be installed, showing what those solar panels look like so that they can go through their approval process as well. All right, step five is the actual physical installation of the solar panels. So you'll have the, the, the crew will come out to the site with the materials. Uh, and the crew may split up into two or three different teams. Typically, you'll have your roof crew that will lay out all the racking and then do the physical attachment of the solar panels on the roof, while at the same time, you could have an electrical crew at ground level doing the inverter hookup and installing your AC disconnect, basically where the solar system is gonna tie in to the electric grid. Uh, of course, if you're installing battery backup with your solar power system, you could have another crew that installs a backup loads panel and whatever the gateway or switching mechanism needed. So if you have to disconnect your home from the electric grid, but still power inside the house, that all of that switchover happens seamlessly. All right, step number six is your final inspection. So your local authority, whichever authority issued your permits, they're gonna send an inspector out to make sure that what was installed matches the plans that were submitted and matches what was on those permits. Now, the purpose of this is really to ensure safety standards making sure that all the electrical equipment is properly grounded, uh, making sure that the installation complies with fire safety standards. Also, making sure that the solar installation provides adequate means for disconnection. Let's say the power company has to come out because they're servicing the electric grid, they need to be able to shut down your solar system from outside. Also, firefighters. If firefighters are responding to your home 
and they need to be able to kill power into the home so they, they don't have live voltage into the home before they start cutting into your walls and spraying water and, and, and putting out that fire. So that's what the inspection is really about is code compliance and safety. Some lenders, like our sponsor, Climate First Bank, will give you, the customer, the opportunity to confirm that work has been completed. It makes the approach more friendly for the homeowner because the power is in your hands to confirm whether or not the contractor has met its obligations. And then finally, step number seven is the final permission to operate. Okay, so final permission to operate, or, or what we call PTO, this is basically when the power company gives you the green light after they've received the inspection report, they've reviewed the interconnection application. Uh, in some cases, they may send an inspector of their own out to, to check and look at everything before energizing the system. But basically, this is the all clear where you can fully power up your solar panels and use that power not only inside the house, but also to be able to sell back to the power company if and when you have excess solar power available. So these are the seven major steps in the solar installation process. By the way, if you're interested in working with Climate First Bank to finance your solar project, make sure to go to climatefirstbank.com surge so that you can start your application and get connected with an approved installer in your area right away. Now, of course, if you're getting good value from these videos you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and also go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your recommended feed so you can stay up to date with everything. Now, if you're a homeowner, if you're in the process of looking at different solar and battery storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe you already have a price quote and you need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the right equipment and getting the best deal, uh, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below here. Set up a call with a solar surge expert, uh, or you can use the free online calculator tool to see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. But that pretty much does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.